your wife, Barbara, it, it, tell me if I'm wrong on this, but the first time you met her, did she actually set you up with one of her friends instead? Well, I, well Barbara was a pretty popular girl. She was, uh, she was sort of a, uh, you know, popular girl in her, in her high school and she when she came to campus. And the girl I was dating at the time was a popular girl from, from our school. They were friends from different sororities that, that got to know each other and the, then all that stuff. And, uh, uh, but the girl I was dating, we all decided we were gonna go date around in college and if we ended up at the end of college, fine. If we didn't, that's fine. And so anyway, um, Mary was her name. She introduced me to Barbara. I walked Barbara down to where she was working at the uh, bacteriology building and she was going to a class and, uh, uh, and she was working a little bit to try to pay her way through school. And so uh, uh, I called her up that night and asked her if she'd like to go out. She, she, I couldn't work me on her schedule. So she set me up in the meantime with a couple of gals she knew I wouldn't like. <laughs> oh, okay, that's how the story goes. <laughs> that's the way it goes. And uh, she was, she was right. Oh, they were actually nice girls, but they were, they were not good. They were somebody I wouldn't want to go any further with. And so uh, then finally, Barbara worked me into her schedule after two or three weeks, and then we, then we, of course, we've dated ever since. How do you think your life would be different if you never met her? Barbara's, Barbara is one of the unique individuals who realized that. Uh, well, when she, when she first met me, she had no idea that I was going to be a golf professional, and that neither did I. I thought I was going to be a pharmacist. But she also uh, realized that uh, when I started playing golf that I had something a little special as a talent. And she said that uh, she sort of knew that she, for me to be successful, she had to sort of uh, uh, make sure that I sort of dominated the scene, and she was very supportive. She stayed in the background. She didn't want to get in front of things, and because because she said, and, and you know, I, I always loved what uh, uh, there was a line that that uh, Winnie Palmer, who was one of Barbara's best friends, uh, Arnold Palmer's wife. Arnold Palmer's wife, yeah. Uh, and, and Barbara and Winnie were, were very very close, and uh, Winnie said she said you know she says I would get mad at Arnold on Tuesday. And I'd be afraid to say anything to him, because you know I didn't want to inter bother his golf game and, and, and make him get his mind off his game of the week. And by su time Sunday roll rolled around, I forgot what I was mad about, so I just forgot it. It's a pretty good way to do it. And Barbara was much the same. She would she would find a, if there was an article in the newspaper that was a bad article, she'd make sure she cut that thing out of the newspaper and put it in the trash can before I could ever see the newspaper. So she never let me see stuff like that. And so. Um, she was great. She still is. Uh, she took it to the extremes too. I, I mean, in some situations to protect you. I think it was the 1967 Sahara Invitational in Las <laughs> Vegas. Tell about what happens in the middle of the night there. Oh, well, Barbara, I'm, I'm, I shot 62 on Saturday, and Barbara's pregnant, and Barbara had uh, she was having had a miscarriage during the middle of the night. She didn't tell me. She just she did take it to an extreme. She ended up uh, uh, finally waking me up about eight o'clock in the morning, and she says, "I think I'm having a miscarriage. I think I need to go to the hospital." I mean, she had been there most of the night, and but she was she knew I need, she wanted to make sure I got a good night's sleep. She didn't care about herself. She made sure I got a night's sleep. Took her to the hospital, and of course, uh, then I went out. I won the golf tournament. Came back, picked her up, and then I was Mr. Mom for about the next week, <laughs> taking care of her. But uh, it was. Um, She's, she's always been great that way. And, you know, we have, we have five kids, 22 grandkids, and she is, you know, she, she spends her time being Mimi, which is what they call her, being a great grandmother and, and taking care of her kids. And she was great. And she raised our kids. I mean, you know, she always, she always took care of the discipline with our kids. Uh, if uh, uh, one of the kids were bad and so forth and so on, she didn't want me coming home if I had been gone for a week to come home and discipline the kids. She said she wanted me to, when the, I came home, that the kids were always my friend and I was always my friend. And she didn't want to, because you know, when you're away for a while, it's hard, it's hard sometimes. And so she was just, she's been fantastic.